You can go to www.geoshape.org for additional information or also visit our GitHub page for the source code of the software developed under the project. Um, so I am Cyrus Mistaghi and uh, I am the technical lead uh, on the Rogue project. The goal behind Rogue has been to streamline collaboration on geospatial data between distributed partners. When we say distributed partners here, we mean government agencies, organizations, non-government agencies, um, and even volunteer groups uh, who want to collaborate on geospatial data. Uh, GeoShape uh, has to be free and open source as a result. This is because uh, when you have different organizations and volunteer groups involved, one, it helps for the software to be free of uh, licensing fees, and it also helps for it to be, and it, for that matter, it's required for it to be open source, uh, which eases uh, the export license uh, concerns. Um, another uh, important thing for uh, that we have to take into cons consideration when developing uh, GeoShape is that it had to be easy to develop. Uh, for example, we can actually set up an entire software stack or st entire system uh, in about 20 minutes. So about 20 minutes to an hour, you can have a system up and running. And I'm going to give you a demo of, of some of the more um, you know, visible components of the system. The idea is that each partner um, who's basically intended to collaborate on geospatial data, each of the partners will have their own instance of GeoShape. Uh, each partner will be able to make edits to geospatial data and actually synchronize with other partners. And uh, another key important information here is that uh, each partner will be able to be fully operational if they don't have any connectivity uh, to the internet or the other partners. They can basically continue to edit data, collect data, and actually when uh, then they have uh, when uh, network connectivity becomes available, they'll be able to synchronize uh, with the other partners. Uh, the system also includes a mobile application called Arbiter, and uh, this is this can be used down on the ground uh, by uh, by you know members of these partners uh, to collect geospatial data. So without further ado, let's uh, bring up a quick demo here. Um, when we say, um, when we talk about a GeoShape uh, instance, uh, this is essentially uh, what it is. This is the portal where you'd go to ba basically get access uh, to this instance. Uh, what you see here is actually called GeoNode. Uh, it's, a, um, it's a system where you can upload layers, you can view your layers, and actually make edits to them. Uh, if you look here, we have a list of layers uh, on this page. If I go to the map screen, uh, we can view a list of existing maps, uh, or for our purposes, we're going to, I'm going to go, uh, go ahead and create a new map. Okay, so um, this brings up our web client, which is called Maploon. Uh, you only see a base map here, and we can go ahead and quickly add additional layers. Uh, this particular particular server has a relatively um, reasonable list of layers, but we're, go we're going to go ahead and filter them really quick. Um, I'm going to add all layers that have the name OD3 for operational demonstration 3 in them. And now I've added them to the, to the map. So what you'll see here is all the data uh, shows up on the map and um, you can see a list of layers here on the left. Um, we can actually bring in layers from different servers. If you have other partners, you can bring their layers directly from them, or you can even bring in some of the uh, basically uh, pre-specified layers. For example, here, um, you could bring in an imagery layer, for example, and um, put it on the map. But for ease of visibility right now, I will go ahead and hide that. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and save this map really quick um, and I'll name it demo1. If I was to go to the maps list, there'll be a map there now called demo1 and anybody who opens it, they'll get this list, list of layers and features. Um, okay, so uh, so a quick thing here. So let me zoom out, zoom in on this um, 
the data we have here real quick. And um, basically this client allows you to uh, view information on these different layers. So let's go ahead and pick, uh, we have a portion of a river here that has a bit of flooding, for example. And um, you can also see other information here about different buildings that have been placed. Um, a point I want to make is this particular point or feature on the map uh, has some um, has a single photo associated with it. This photo was taken um, from the mobile device, and that's how it gets associated uh, with features on the map. So, um, so there we go. Um, so this is basically how we can display the data uh, in an existing in an existing feature. Uh, we can also easily create new features either here or on the mobile device. I'll show the mobile device in a bit, but let's go ahead and create one here. So let's say we want to create uh, an inst uh, basically a feature on the uh, vulnerable data structure out. I can actually place a point here for a particular uh, building, for example. Um, then the form comes up. You could specify the location. Um, if clicking on the map wasn't precise enough, and then you can select here. So let's go ahead and create a severe a damage to a building that's severe. And the date uh, that we're visiting, let's say it's right now. Um, and uh, we could fill out basically other information here uh, about the particular uh, building and fill all these out. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and save this really quick. So now we essentially have a feature on the map now, now that we can click uh, to view its information. Um, so um, now that we've seen how to basically view information on a particular feature, um, let's go ahead and, um, you know, let's, let me go ahead and show you how this would work on another partner's system. What I have open up here, it's a second tab. Uh, this particular uh, URL, it's a server, um, it's one of our servers, and I'm going to go ahead and go to a completely different server, which will go here, and uh, this is actually run a slightly different version, which is why it looks different, but uh, basically it's the same software. I'm going to go ahead and create a map here, and I will similarly uh, add the same layers real quick. Okay. If I go to the same part of, uh, it was in Dominican Republic, uh, we want to go ahead and see that this, this is showing the system of a different partner, let's say different organization. If I go here, we will notice that the information I entered on the other server, it's not here yet. Okay, and I can show that to you. You can see here we have only three things next to each other. I come to the other server, there's a fourth red one here. And um, what I can do is, um, once we've entered all the data and updated it, uh, when we have a network connectivity, we can choose to synchronize it uh, with the other partner. So I will go ahead and basically here, uh, the synchronization section, and I will say, go ahead and send the information I have on this server to the other server and get anything new that they may have. And if I come here, I'm going to quickly do a refresh. And now you see this particular feature, it's now on their server. Uh, what's uh, important about part of the technology here is if you can actually view the history um, of, this, uh, of this feature. You can see that when it was created, uh, what user created it. Um, and let's go to a more interesting feature. This particular feature, if I look on the history, you can see it has had many changes to it. And each one of the changes, you can tell exactly who made it and when they made it. Um, okay, so this is an example. Um, of the, the, basically, the, there's a technology here we've created uh, that's called GeoGit. And what it does is that um, it allows different partners to continue make a lot of changes to, to a set of data. But when they want to bring it together, they just simply have to do um, the synchronization uh, that we've initiated from here. It basically um, figures out exactly who did what, where it happened, and it 
automatically merges all the data. Typically, when you have different organizations involved, you have to export your data into shapefiles or KML files, email them around, and it's very easy to lose data and very difficult to integrate everyone's data. This essentially makes that very easy. Um, actually, this uh, software uh, goes a step beyond, and what it allows you to do is when uh, the data is being, in, uh, being merged, there are some cases where you could have a potential conflict, where if different partners enter contradictory information about the same exact feature, for example, I can come here and may maybe I, somebody goes to the ground and um, sets this to moderate damage, uh, which is showed by yellow here, and the other um, partner goes and modifies the same thing. If they don't touch it, then there's no conflict. But if they go and change that because they observe it to be something completely different, um, now um, this guy's, these have different values. And if I come from here to generate, uh, to actually uh, perform a synchronization, it's gonna say that uh, there is a, con a contradiction in the data that was entered. And we could easily uh, basically see what the changes are. And um, if I come down here, we'll see that um, it used to be moderate change and on one side and another from the other. And we could easily say who, which one we pick. We can actually look at the authors uh, to see who entered this. Uh, uh, this user entered this value um, and uh, also in this other side, another value was entered here and we could choose which ones we actually want to proceed with. And let's go ahead and save this. And I can say done. And yes. Now essentially the data on both server now uh, are identical despite there being conflict uh, in the specific data. Uh, okay. And um, so we've seen about how to do edits, view information and do sync. I want to quickly show the mobile application. Uh, this is an emulator that's running the mobile application. So let me zoom out and go to an area of map where the mobile application is viewing right now. Um, so what you see here on the mobile application is that same area. Uh, there is a feature here. If I double click this information, um, I can say, it says type. It says outro. I can go ahead and edit this, and let's go ahead and um, uh, let's go ahead and change this resource to um, water. Okay, this is how you would associate a photo. Um, basically, you can take a picture from on the mobile device. And I'm going to just go ahead and select one right now. Um, it's attaching it. You could select many. Uh, or multiple ones and um, I'm going to return to the map. So basically this feature here doesn't have a photo um, uh, but I've on the mobile device I've actually just updated the information in there and attached a photo you could take like again you can take it with the camera and so forth um, or just choose from pictures already on the, on the device. Now if I perform a synchronization here the data on this mobile device goes to the server and the data from the server comes back to the mobile device. So if I, um, we're gonna give this a second. It's essentially sending all the photos down and on pulling all the information, pulling all, sending all the photos up and pulling all the information down. So, um, and as you can see now, uh, there's a photo that I added from the mobile device and I had updated the type to be uh, Agua. And if, if we go to the history, you'll see that um, that user is actually called admin on that mobile device. But if we look at what they changed, we'll be able to easily see uh, that a photo was added there and also the type was changed down here. Uh, so that's, that's essentially how uh, this system en enables collaboration, where um, a lot of people could be involved and uh, contribute to, a, to basically complete or improve uh, the map and geospatial uh, data available for a particular mission. This, uh, the focus of Rogue has been um, humanitarian assistance and disaster relief. Um, 
However, this could be applied uh, to, to different fields. And a um, couple of quick points is uh, an example use case here would be, let's say there's a disaster in, in this case, let's say there's a disaster in the Dominican Republic um, and you want the uh, Dominican Republic's military, a, a partner nation, let's say, for example, the United States military wants to help um, or and also Red Cross and also you have volunteer groups in the area. These guys all want to collaborate to try to find out uh, update the status of either roads or for, uh, or building uh, assessments for that matter. Um, what can happen is the um, the individuals that are not in the affected area, they're at home, either even in different countries, they can go to particular servers, use the latest satellite imageries uh, to try to basically place a point, place a building for every... Um, building that was completely damaged. So from the satellite imagery that you can, again, you can bring in, um, you can bring in different different layers uh, from different servers, but from there you could probably look at those images in a lot of cases and actually specify that a particular bu building is visibly uh, damaged there. So you could create a new feature and you could set it to uh, completely severely damaged. Um, similarly, uh, some buildings you can't tell from the image if it's very uh, severely damaged so you could still put a point there and set the status to unknown then people who are on the ground who have mobile devices uh, they can go and update these information from the ground um, to help basically bring up a, a complete uh, picture together and um, this is basically the the quick overview of the system and um, uh, you know, thanks. Thanks for watching. Uh, again, there's different co components to the system, uh, but this is a quick overview. And if you guys need any more information, please get a hold of any of us, and we'll be more than happy to uh, provide the information to you. Thank you very much.